this is solid sodium hydroxide and this is sodium hydroxide dissolved in water. Sodium hydroxide is a base. It's one of the most important bases used in industry. Millions of tons are produced every year and it's used in, for example, the production of soap, paper and textiles. It doesn't chemically react with metals, but it does chemically react with proteins and fats, so it should be treated with caution. It can cause severe chemical burns on your skin, so you have to be very careful. The sodium hydroxide in this beaker is heavily watered down. So even if I touch it, which I shouldn't really do, it doesn't really do much damage. But if you do get any on yourself, you should try to wash it off as soon as you can. It kind of feels soapy because it chemically reacts with the oils on my skin and turns them into chemicals that are a little like the chemicals in soap. As watered down as this is, if it gets into your eyes, it can do major damage. So again, be careful. If you've ever felt the sting of soap in your eyes, getting this into your eyes is much, much worse. Bases are hugely important in lots of industries. For example, sodium hydroxide is used, as I said, in the production of soap, paper and textiles. Lithium hydroxide is used to produce lithium ion batteries in phones, computers and electric vehicles. Potassium hydroxide is used to produce alkaline batteries and fertilizers. Calcium hydroxide is used to change the acidity of soils on farms. And sodium hydrogen carbonate, bicarb soda, which we looked at extensively in our last episode, is used in the food industry a lot and our bodies produce it to neutralize the stomach acid that enters the small intestine. At a basic level, pardon the pun, I should say at a simple level, a base is a chemical that reacts with an acid to produce water and any type of salt. This reaction is called a neutralization reaction because the acid and the base neutralize each other. Let me demonstrate. As we've seen, hydrochloric acid reacts with magnesium and that's what's happening in these two test tubes. Now if I pour water into the test tube on the left, I water down the acid even more than it already is, that is, I'm diluting the acid even more than it already is. And so the reaction slows down a little, but it continues because there's still acid present. Now if I add some sodium hydroxide, a base, into the test tube on the right, the hydrochloric acid immediately reacts with it and water and sodium chloride are produced. The MG is not producing bubbles anymore because there is literally no acid in the test tube anymore. The acid has chemically reacted with the base, so now I just have a piece of magnesium lying in a test tube that has water and salt in it. So in general, an acid plus a base produces water plus a type of salt. And this is called a neutralization reaction. The mixture of salt and water is neither acidic nor basic. It's neutral. Now when a neutralization reaction occurs, it's not always obvious, but heat is always generated. The sulfuric acid and the sodium hydroxide here are both about 15 degrees Celsius. But when I mix them, a chemical reaction takes place which produces water and sodium sulfate. And the temperature quickly rises to about 20 degrees Celsius. This temperature change tells us that a reaction has occurred. But as I said, it's not obvious because the sodium sulfate remains dissolved in the water. Once again, the general equation holds, but the salt produced this time is sodium sulfate. Bicarb soda, that is, sodium hydrogen carbonate, is also a base. If I add some hydrochloric acid to the bicarb soda, they both neutralize each other. Hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydrogen carbonate produces water plus sodium chloride, a salt, plus this time we also get carbon dioxide, most of which just floats away. Now in these neutralization reactions, what's left in the glassware may still be acidic or basic because the amount of acid and base I added and or how concentrated they were may not have been the same. Neutralization still occurred, but some acid or base may still be left over. In our last episode, we saw that the stomach acid carrying the partially digested food that gets squeezed into the small intestine chemically reacts with the bicarb soda that is produced by our pancreas that sits just behind our stomach and water, sodium chloride and carbon dioxide are produced. This is an example of a neutralization reaction. There are cells in our small intestine that can measure the level of acidity and they send signals so that the process is carefully controlled. You don't want too much bicarb and you don't want too little. Our bodies are amazing. 
Thanks for watching this short excerpt from Liakos Educational Media's video Shedding Light on Acids and Bases Episode 3, Neutralization. The Shedding Light on Acids and Bases series makes it easy for students to learn all the basics, pardon the pun, of acids and bases. Students will come away with a deep understanding of what acids and bases are, and they will learn about how much acids and bases affect their lives. The rest of Episode 3, which you've just seen a part of, goes into more details about bases and then introduces students to acid base indicators. Visit our website, links in the description below, to download the accompanying student activity sheet and in fact all of our student activity sheets, including a wide selection of pracs. Our website also has details about how you can watch the whole program and the whole series. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching.